You see a man in front of you. This man looks strange, not like any man you have seen before. Suddenly, you realize you were looking in a mirror. I think that's enough of that for now. Um. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I agree. You're quite fond of the show, aren't you? Ah. Uh, yeah, you know. I like it. It's pretty neat. Who are you? Okay, come on. Let's get you down to the observation room. Ooh. Uh, I don't like the sound of the observation. Oh, I'm being wheeled. I don't have a choice in the matter, do I? Ah. Uh, sounds awfully so busy. starting to feel like home to you. Gotta hope not. Don't worry. Try and get you out of here eventually. Uh-huh. Oh. Just in here. I don't like this observation room. This observation Okay, room. are we through in the next room? Just relax, and we'll get started in a moment. Right. G goodbye creepy guy who's locked me in here with a cassette tape and a camera. Right, Mr. Asian, now are you ready? Sure. Just hit record on the tape deck in front of you when you're ready. Okay, click. I'm ready, baby! Born this ready! Subject 12198623. New session entry. We have myself, Dr. Alexander, leading, and in a room we have our patient, Mr. James Asian. Hello. As we know, James has recently recovered from a two week coma following his accident. In our last three sessions, James's attempts to recollect events of the accident seen him merging his memory with his imagination. These episodes have always ended in panic, and we've had to terminate the session abruptly. Let's try and do this one better, James. Okay. So when you're ready, bring this back. So I know how ready. This must be, but you can do this, James. It's time to remember. Okay. I'm so ready to remember. Remembering's like my favorite thing. Who is that? Your mind. It's oh. like a conscious black box. Uh-oh. It can show you your memories. Look into it. Like a conscious black box, you say? Okay, all right. So long as this thing jabs a needle in my eye, I know everything will be all right. Whoa. Okay, well that was something. In your most recent episode, you recalled a false memory of a remote weather station. You were isolated from the rest of the world, locked inside your coma. We interacted with you daily, encouraging you to wake. Your family would do number puzzles with you. Anything really to bring you back. People needed answers, James. Do you remember? I have another signal here for you, James. It's at 5610FM. Uh-oh. Okay. Five, six. Type in the numbers, James. 12, 19, 86, 23, 04. Type in the numbers. Report. Yes. Wait, what is this? Whoa, wait a minute. Traffic accident, fatal accident, one injured. Oh, I got in a car accident? Empty whiskey, out of control, Sudan. Oh, so the other guy, the other guy was drunk. Oh no. The other driver was an ex-police officer of 20 years. I had my sister in the car with me? Weird, what the hell? It must be the circled things. Okay. 20F dash fatal accident and then empty whiskey and out of control. Okay, that's got to be it. Out of control. I think we're just going to go backwards through all of these. Find signal, James. Listen to the voices. Uh-huh. You have to face it, James. Right. Finally. Okay, 7,000 FM. You got it, baby! 
That ain't nothing. It's easy. It's not like me at all. I've worked with Officer Hennings for six years and not once have we even talked about alcohol. Drunk driving. He, he was a father, a husband. He was fine. No way he caused this. It's him. Uh -oh. This Haitian guy. He's got something to hide. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. This doesn't make sense to you. No, it doesn't. Uh oh. You step out into the hospital ward, only it seems abandoned. Your vision is blurry. I see. Under stress, keep a healthy mind. Time to quit. Help is here. Ah, okay. Driving home. Don't have that fifth pint. Fifth pint? Fifth pint? Four pints and you're good to drive? Okay. You tense up. Someone else is here. Who's here in this hospital that probably has a lot of people in here? Hello? Peekaboo. Peekaboo. Hello? Who's here? Who's there? Is someone there that I should know about? Hello? Hi. Hi, diddly ho. You grab the keys from the table. They weigh heavy in your hand. They're also bleeding. They feel really grimy. You spend most waking moments in here. The only video they have, some horror compilation. Trash. <laughs> uh oh. That doesn't sound good. You only caught a glimpse of the room. You guess that's why there is no detail here. Oh, cause it's a memory. I see. Okay. Yee. Another door you never opened. You don't know what was in here. Okay. I feel good about this. The waiting area is dark, but you feel a presence right behind me! You tricked me. That's my trick! Someone breathes on your neck. Standing over you! Standing over you! Alright. Okay. Well. Whoever's standing right over me. Or you. Literally watching you from the shadows of your room. They are going to be in for a treat. You feel dread in the pit of your stomach. I sure do, don't I? Oh, that's bright. Ah! Okay, we have a 22-year-old male just brought in from a vehicle collision. He was awake and mobile at the scene, but collapsed on arrival to the emergency ward. The other passengers died in the accident. Uh -oh. Getting no pulse. Prepare for defib. Amp charge full to 10 and give me 100 joules. Oh. Come on, 100 joules. Charging amp full to 10. Oh. 100 joules. You got it, baby. 100 joules. Ah, here we go. Can we get this on the screen, please? You got it on the screen right now. Okay. Maybe not. Oh, there we go. Hello. Hi. Oh, that's not good. Kabooski. Ow. <laughs> Ow. No reaction from first stage. Let's try higher. 200 joules. Keep the amp charged at 10. <laughs> You got it, baby. Keep the charge at ten. Let's go. Let's go. Kaboom! Didn't know I have to okay, do this to myself. Of some sort here, a weak signal. Uh huh. Let's keep going. Increase again. Three sixty. Charge full. Charging. Come on, three sixty. Hurry. Clear. Oh. Well, would you look at that? It seems we have a pulse. Uh huh. Rhythm is stable. We need to run an x-ray right away. Okay, x-ray, you got it! I don't remember how to do the x-ray. Oh, that was it. That was it. Okay, what do we got? How many broken bones? Looks like an intracerebral hemorrhage. We need to drain this now to relieve pressure. Drain my brain? Uh-oh. Switch on a drill, please. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh boy, okay. Alright. Um Yeah, sure. The drill, please. Oh it's it's on, baby. Oh it is it is on. 
Oh, okay. We didn't need to see the x-ray. Okay, I gotcha. Mr. Ishan, you've made excellent progress. You're doing great. We need you to stay calm and try to relax while we go through the next step. We're going to attempt to alleviate some of this discomfort. Owie! Why would you do that to me? Oh, hey, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Ah, okay. Ah, back to the beginning. And in many ways, my favorite. Not only is it New Year's Eve, but tomorrow you leave on a six-month trip abroad with friends. Mom, Dad, and your sister Jennifer has decided to throw a party to celebrate it all. The house is full. You're in the living room, and as usual, you don't recognize a single soul. Look around. The room is full of chatty strangers, mostly friends of Mom and Dad. There's a door to the hall. You exchange pleasantries. Nod and smile, nod and smile. Uh, leave? You push through the crowd into the hallway. The hallway is as welcoming as ever. Only this time the folks have put a great big banner up across the main hall. Half-finished drinks are abandoned on almost every horizontal surface. Stairs lead up, although the party is firmly downstairs. Look around. Same as ever. Stairs, door to the living room, and door to the kitchen. Inter kitchen. They say all the best parties are in the kitchen. That they do. The kitchen is full of people and loud. There are drinks and food on the table and the party is in full swing. Dad has cooked a hog roast which sits proudly on the table although no one is eating it. Eat hog! Maybe later. Look around. There is a utility room and writing on the wall. Also Jen is here signaling you. Okay. Read writing. Happy New Year 1986 on another banner. Weird place to hang it. Okay. Talk to Jennifer. She's too far away, and the room is too loud. Go to Jennifer. You push through, apologizing over and over to get to Jennifer. You hug, you're going to miss each other. You thank her for the party. She asks if you're enjoying the party. Um... No. You tell her you're not having fun. She frowns. Well, too bad. She tells you to enjoy it anyway and to loosen up. She asks you to get her a drink. Okay, where's a drink? You pour Jen a drink and one for yourself, too. There's never an awkward silence with Jennifer. She always has a question. She asks if you have everything sorted for the big trip. Yeppers peppers! She repeats herself. Yes. You tell her yes, that you have packed everything with plenty of room to spare. Another hug, your family have really gone out of their way to make this trip happen for you. It might be what you need to get some perspective and maybe not fuck up so much. She's gonna miss you. You're gonna miss her. She walks away. Jen has disappeared into the crowd. You're left standing, nodding and smiling at the approving faces. There's so much to do for this move, can't mess it up. But first, a drink. Drink. You pour and down another drink, anything to move the night along. Uh, enter closet. Open door. Open the door and peer in. You're never allowed in here normally. This is where dad keeps his fine wines and whiskeys. Ceiling to floor racks, a collector, although he does actually drink them too. There's a bottle with a ribbon around it and a card. A bottle. It's a gift from dad, I think. There's a card next to it. Read card. You pick up the whiskey and the card. It's your dad's handwriting. Son, we're so proud of you and everything you've achieved. You've earned this. It's a bottle of 25-year-old double malt. You shouldn't really, but you have to try it. With your whiskey in hand, you take in the room around you. There must be hundreds, no, thousands of pounds of worth of drink in here. You really must thank your dad for the whiskey. Okay, leave. You head back into the kitchen, clutching your new best friend. You stumble out of the utility room and back into the kitchen. That is one strong whiskey. You take another swig and give a thumbs up to dad across the room. He nods and winks. Talk to dad. He tells you he's proud of you and to go easy tonight. Early flight tomorrow. Hug dad. Oh, all right. Leave. A few bumps and laughs on the way through it and you make it to the hall. You stop dead in your tracks. It's Jen covered in blood. She's staring straight at you. No one else notices. Blood is dripping down her face. It's mixing with tears. I'm sorry, I don't understand. I'm sorry, I don't understand. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Sorry, I don't understand. Oh. We tried our best, Mrs. Asian, but her injuries were too severe. No, I 
don't understand. I was just talking to her. I'm afraid Jennifer passed away before we could get to her in surgery. We did the best we could. I am so sorry. Where is she? Let me see her. Please, Mrs. Zation, take a seat. I don't want to take a seat. Let me talk to her. Now. I'll arrange for you to see her. In the meantime, James is in recovery. He's stable for now. I don't want to see him. You're standing in the hallway. Something stopped you in your tracks. While searching your mind, your sister interrupts. She waves her hand in front of you and asks if you can drive her home. You still feel out of sorts. Those words echo. Yeah, yeah, we can talk in the car. Go get your keys. I can't drive. Okay. Look around. Doors to the kitchen and living room lead from your wall. Stairs can take you up. Go upstairs. You'd love to call it a night, but Jen is waiting patiently. She's waiting patiently for the ride home you promised her. Oh no. You're sure your keys are in the living room? The living room has a much more relaxed atmosphere compared to the kitchen. Various guests are sat on the chairs having civilized conversations. There's a coffee table in the middle of the room. Your mom is pouring a drink at the drinks cabinet. Talk to mom. Tears immediately start to appear in her eye. My son, off to America. She gives you a hug. You need to look for them. They must be either in the kitchen or the living room. Your mom's collection of wines is weird. Definitely no keys in here. Alright, empty handed you head back into the hall. Maybe your keys are in the kitchen. I know where this is going. The kitchen is busy. Way too many people crammed in here, but I guess this is where the food and drink are at. The guests are like a set of vultures picking at the roast on the kitchen counter. Your dad is locking up the utility room. Look around. It's difficult to move around in here between all the people in the kitchen table. The table is a mess. Party food mixed. Unclaimed drinks. Used napkins. No keys, though. Dad tells you to take your sister home, but to go slow since you've had a few drinks already. No way, son. I think you've had enough of my hard-earned collection. Huh. You head back out the hallway. You're standing back in the hallway, bottle of whiskey in hand, but no car keys. Jen points to the living room and sighs as she puts on her coat. I was just in there! You sure your keys are in the living room? Uh, I was just in there. You take a look underneath, no keys. Oh, I thought that would have been it. Look under table. Take a look underneath. Look under coats. Take a look underneath. You search through all the jackets and coats until you find yours. Aha! Car keys in the pocket. You grab both. All right! Easy! Keys in hand, you head back into the hall. I mean, not that this is good. Maybe it would have been better if I never found it. She has work in the morning and no one else has any sit state to drive. You can handle it, though. You know the road like the back of your hand, don't you? I don't. Uh, no. Uh, yes. Okay, let's go! You open the front door and walk out into the freezing night. Cold air hits you. You're glad you have your jacket with you. There's a dusting of snow around you as you step down from the porch. The yard extends around the back of the house and the car sits at the front of the house. Ah, <sighs> go around house. Just get Jen home, then you can get back to the party. All right, uh, enter car. You fumble with the key, car handle, confused until Jen tells you that maybe use the key in your hand. Unlock door. Fumble with the car, you usually get the door open and climb inside. All right. Oh boy, the car is freezing. As you fumble around with your seatbelt, your sister opens up the car glove box and hand you a note and a key that was inside. She tells you that it's for when you return. The note is from your dad and reads, Hi son, hope you enjoy your break. You'll need to fire up the generator around the back to get power and lights on. Also found something in the attic for you. It's in your room. Enjoy. Alright, start car. You tried to turn the ignition with sheer willpower, but hold, despite holding the keys in... PUT KEYS IN IGNITION, YOU SMART ASS! Takes a number of attempts, but you eventually slot the key in the in ignition. Start car. <sighs> the car squeals, but stays stationary. Ah, release brake. It really does seem like I'm very drunk. Shift. Put car in gear. Change... Gear. Drive. You put the car in gear- Ah! That one you're not gonna make me do a specific- You shouldn't re you really shouldn't be driving. Yeah, you- I am driving very drunk. Yeah. 
Jen starts dozing off as soon as the journey got going. This shouldn't take long. You come to a junkin. Is it left or right? You can't remember. I'm gonna go with right. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Left. Look around. The road goes off to the left and right. You can't remember which way to go. The roads are quiet always. You don't want to, but you had better ask Jen for directions. She grunts and throws her arm to the left. It's left. Of course it's left. You turn the car left at the junction and accelerate off. Confident that you are on the right road now, you loosen up and put your foot down on the accelerator. You feel powerful as the engine roars at your command. Jen sits up and clusters at your arm. She asks you to slow down. Slow down. That's not what really happened, though, is it? You're all over the place, James. Pull over. <sighs> you try to react, but your body isn't responding. There's nothing you can do to stop this. There's no way to control it. The lights merge with your car. The outside joins the inside. The whole world James, around for you. James, sake, pull over! James! It was at this very moment, wasn't it, James? The moment you lost it all. Your sister. Your parents. Yourself. And then you made it worse. Go on. Show us what you did. You wake up in the car. Your world is upside down. Your seatbelt struggles against gravity, trying to hold you in your seat. An impact into another car has torn a hole in the chassis. Poisonous fumes spill into your car from the engines. You're in grave danger. You have to get out of here. You can't move. Your seatbelt is still in place. Uh, you release yourself from the seat. Gravity takes over as you slump onto the roof of the car. You squeeze through the wreckage and fall to your knees on the ground next to your vehicle. Every breath brings pain to your chest. Your head is throbbing. A blue car is smashed into the passenger side of your car. Your life cannot be ruined by this. You are standing holding your whiskey and your dad's note and flashing lights are approaching at a distance. Oh. A crash site. Smoke billows from the crash cars to the sky above. Exterior lights flicking on and off. The note, always changing, now reads, Get through this, James. I don't care if you want to or not. Put whiskey in blue car. With the lights approaching closer, you begin to hear the shrill of the sirens. You simply cannot go to jail for this. You clean the bottle to remove your connection with the whiskey, and you then very deliberately spill the remainder of the bottle's contents on the driver, and you toss the incriminating evidence onto his passenger seat. A circle of flashing lights surround you, illuminating the crash site in the darkness. Behind them, an army of people, all staring. One figure steps out, silhouette, and walks towards you. The silhouette is a police officer. And in uniform, he beckons you to approach. You try to talk, but you are not making any sense. As you approach the man, the pulsating lights around you get dimmer and dimmer while the pain in your head increases. You fall to the ground at I his know feet. You. I know you're tearing yourself apart over it, but no matter what you keep telling yourself, you have to listen to me. That accident. That poor man. Me. You have to remember. It was all your fault. I know what you did. How you left me there to protect yourself. Planting evidence on some poor man. You went headfirst into that officer and wrecked all of our lives. And you couldn't even take responsibility. You did the right thing for you and no one else. Save yourself. Only it was wrong, wasn't it? Look at you now. Utterly oh. consumed by it. Say it, James. Say it. Tell them. Doctor. All of your episodes were recorded to tape. This is the fourth. It has to end, James. Do you not understand? So 
sometimes they make you watch your past sessions to see what really happened. Well, I think we've made progress today, Mr. Asian. I guess we should tell the police what you've told us. Although I don't suspect they'll take you anywhere. I think you'll be with us for quite some time. Come on, let's get you back to your shows. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh. Ah! Ah! Okay, um... <sighs> that was... That was awesome. What a grim story, but I love it. I love that it commits to the grimness of it. Oh! The character isn't someone who deserves redemption. He's going through hell. And he kind of deserves it. Oh, it's so crazy. It all makes sense in a weird way. God, that's insane. It set it up from the very beginning and I love that. Such a unique way to tell a story. That was so fun. That was so fun. That was insanity. I loved that. That was so good. God damn, that was good. I love that. That's unbelievable. I, I loved that. Oh my god. It makes so much sense now. I should have turned on subtitles. I didn't have subtitles on from the beginning. God damn it, that would have been very helpful. Well, there's nothing else to say besides, wow, this was a great game. I loved this. If you want to play this for yourself, I'll put a link in the description below. But thank you everybody so much for watching. Watch out for that thing that's standing right behind you. And just thank you. This was a really cool experience. Let me know if you've got more cool scary games like this for me to play in the comments down below because this one came out like over a year ago and it somehow slipped under my radar and uh, I love it. I remember what he did to me.